the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and this Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of the big God. Next Sunday will be Palm Sunday, and it will be the beginning of the Holy Week. And today's liturgy, this Sunday, it's like a preparation for Palm Sunday. It's the last drug that brought the camels back with regards to the death of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, and Luke um, speaks about the cleansing of the temple as the reason why Jesus was killed. But for John, who will be reading from his gospel today, it is the raising of Lazarus. So when Jesus rose Lazarus, the Pharisees were infuriated and they said, we're going to kill this guy. And then he said to us in the story about the Holy Week. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, oh, my God, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. With the Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. In the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. Through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, 
he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not with him. He said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awake him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death. Well, they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to cover them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, the teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died. So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, 
Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, and they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bonds, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. But Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Um, my dear parishioners of our Lady of Joy. Um, I know that you can see me, but I can't see you. <laughs> We were very silent and uh, we can't be together to have mass, but we thank God for technology that you're able to see us as we celebrate this mass for you and with you today. We continue to pray that the Lord will come to our help. Um, yesterday the Holy Father gave a special blessing and it was very profound. We want to thank all the medical and people, doctors and nurses, all who continue to work so hard to, to bring an end to this um, ordeal, this coronavirus. And we, we pray that we'll be back together soon again. Um, and I can see you, Hayden, I can see you there. And <laughs> I can see you too, Reese, and um, Olivia, and Luke. I know you've seen me, so I see you. Um, today, dear friends in Christ, is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and I want to share a reflection with you titled, The Lazarus Factor. We heard in the Gospel reading that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, and the family were happy. It became a big news in Bethany. Jesus used the tragic experience of Lazarus' death to bring the best out of himself and not the worst. Every believer like Jesus is empowered by divine grace to always bring the best out of himself and not the worst, no matter the misfortune that befalls us. We are now in the second week of a lockdown in our country because of this pandemic caused by coronavirus. How are we responding to this experience? Our joy, our peace, our happiness is being threatened. If at all, they have not been taken away. We can't go out, we can't visit with our friends and family members, we can't go to the movies, we can't go to the gym, and we can't even come to church. Our life is suddenly at a standstill. Are we getting more depressed, anxious, afraid, confused, and irritable as the day goes by? Or are we taking advantage of the situation to bring the best out of us? You know, St. Paul wrote his best letters while he was in prison. It was why he was in dungeon that he wrote most of the beautiful letters we hear every day, every weekend when we come to Mass. He didn't allow that situation to hold him down. And we can learn from him. What is God using you to accomplish during this lockdown? What aspect of your life are you improving on? It is in times like this that Jesus wants his life in us to arise and shine. Don't just sit back and wait for this crisis to be over. With Jesus, you can take your life back and make the best out of this situation. 
This crisis can be an opportunity to strengthen your marriage, to spend more time with your spouse and your kids. This crisis can be an opportunity to improve our prayer life. In fact, I, I abandon saying the, the original prayer of my society that we, we used to say when we were in post lancy when we began um, studying for the priesthood. This is the old prayer that the monks say, the eight ancient monastic office. So when this started, last week I said, oh, I need to go back to this prayer. Uh, and it's meant to sanctify the day. So now I can say Martins, Lord's Prime, Test, Sex, Noon, Vespers, and Complain eight times a day. And so I'm taking advantage of this experience. So we can pray more, we can improve our prayer life. And, and we can give more of our time and talent and resources to our communities. And, and many of you are already doing this. We can use this time of lockdown to learn something new. To do things we have in our bucket list that we can do at home. We can use this time to re-strategize on how to manage our finances to rediscover the true priorities of life. We can use this time to reconnect through phone calls or social media with family members or old friends. We can use this time to evaluate our relationship with the Lord and ask the big question, where am I in my relationship with Jesus? We can use this time to see good movies, especially with our families, like some of you are already doing. We can use this time to go through old photos or pictures to relieve fond memories. You haven't had time to do that. Fond memories of the past. Go back if you have those old pictures. It's just going to bring you joy that you never imagined. We can use this time to exercise more at home. Or if you'd like hiking, like, I, I'm back to hiking. I, I'm preparing, the Jinjin told me that I, I can't hike Black Mountain. I'm already preparing. I went to the Sonora Desert Drive to hike today. So this coming week, you and I are going to Black Mountain. <laughs> you gave me a challenge, so I'm already prepared. So we can use this time to be much more creative. We can use this time to listen to old songs that reminds you of loved ones, especially those who have passed. And if it is permitted and possible, we can use this time to visit the gravesite of our loved ones. We can use this time to clean our homes and do some kind of clear out. We can use this time to visit with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and cultivate the habit of interior silence. Dear friends in Christ, with Jesus, we can live in dominion no matter what life throws at us. By the grace and life of Jesus in us, we have the authority, we have the power to live above every situation. In John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. The challenge, dear friends, that Jesus did for us is that the situation of Lazarus was a, an experience of sorrow, of sadness, but he transformed it. And he's given us that grace, even in this second week of this ordeal, to rise from that experience of fear of sadness, of confusion, and take our lives back because he says that I am the resurrection and the life. The life that Jesus has promised us is not just in eternity. Even here and now, he wants us to live in joy and happiness because we have the source and sustainer of life right inside us. And I remember that very beautiful Easter song that says that because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I 
May we please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, from the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified with the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When we cry for help, the Lord assures us that He is here. Let us therefore pray to Him with confidence. That the church may continue to be the light of the world, bringing truth and salvation to all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the president, all legislators, and governors, that God would guide them to make wise decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all healthcare workers and all those working closely with our sick that they may be surrounded with the grace and the protection of our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For workers, especially all those who are keeping our country supplied with food and the essentials, that God will protect them and keep them healthy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for those suffering from the economic downturn, especially the unemployed and business owners. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And for each of our own special intentions, which we mention now to God in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially dead to God, the primary intention of these Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O Blessed Virgin Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and hope. We rely on you, health of the sick. You who at the cross united with Jesus' pain, keeping steadfast your faith. You, refuge of sinners, you know what we need, and we are sure that you will protect us from sin and coronavirus, so that joy and peace return after this trial. Help us, Mother of the Church, to conform our will to the will of the Father, and to do what we are told by Jesus, who has taken our suffering upon himself, and has bothered himself with our sorrows, to lead us to the cross for the joy of resurrection. Honor your protection with seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not spawn the pleas of your children who are in trial, and free us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. us.
Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that you tell our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as the Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with us in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. <laughs> So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with prayer upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you wills to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our consolation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, Edward's auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, baby God, whom we have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our holy body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, and you will wipe away the tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow the world, all that is good. For him, and with him, and in him, for God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. that by the power of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, Amen. and with your spirit. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord and Lord, 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 Lord,
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. Bless, O oh Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting the desire then be received by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.